Hi there, it's Beauty Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm on my couch. The lighting isn't great. Not the sexiest lighting on YouTube. Um, but we're doing a nail video today and my nails are quite a wreck right now and I want to try my new Chanel nail polish. We're doing, geez, you cannot see this. <laughs> we're doing the shade Vamp. It's a classic sort of maroon deep red shade and uh, yeah we're getting really great lighting right here looks like that <laughs> um, classic classic shade I have only have bought one other Chanel nail polish before and uh, this was many many years ago I still have it this is, I don't even know if they make this shade anymore. It's called Rose. It's very pink. This is very old. And let's see. How much? Still the same size. Still 13 milliliters. But the labeling is a diff bit more simple now. Still called Lavernus. Chanel Paris. Chanel New York. So very pretty similar packaging, even though this was oh gosh, probably well over 15 years ago. All right, so we're trying this on and I'm gonna put this on my hands. I also wanna do a pedicure. Um, I know that's real fun for you guys to watch, but I, and I'll show you in a second, I have a, uh, some really pretty blue kind of teal sparkly nail polish on but I want to switch that out I still want to keep my toes pretty summery even though it's still because it's still the beginning of September it's still really warm um, but I did want to try my new Chanel polish so we're doing a little bit of fall on my fingers um, so we're gonna see how that goes I do want to also give you a little tour of the new nail all the new nail polishes that I have and I did a whole bunch of videos, like first impressions of all these nail polish hauls that I got from like indie companies. And I have to say I've been really pretty impressed. Um, it, uh, I think a lot of like the wear time has to do with my application. And sometimes when my application is a little rushed, um, things get real thick and they just flake off really fast. Um, so that's kind of what happened, I think, with this one. So this is Hollow Taco. This is the purple slushy. Yeah. So this guy, the tops came off pretty quickly, and I think it's because I didn't um, go over the edge with the nail polish. Because I used the base coat, I used the Hollow Taco Long Lasting Base and the Glossy Taco. And uh, this happened. But I've had oak better luck when I tried this polish before, but this is essentially the hollow purple nail polish from her Rainbow Collection. Sorry, I know this lighting is like not great, but you get the gist. Um, just a lot of uh, flaking and stuff happening there. Yeah, so this took me like forever to find in my collection because I was looking for the special cap from Hollow Taco it has like the taco thing on it. And um I couldn't see it. And so I thought, well, I lost this. Where is it? I was looking everywhere in my apartment. So I went back to my bag where I keep all my stuff and there it was in with all the rest. So this is the shade that's on my nails right now. And I like her hollows. Um, I think they're pretty. It's just we're not in the right lighting to really show them off. That this just looks like a dark purple otherwise. So, you know, that's kind of the thing about this kind of a uh, nail polish. You have to be in the right light to really enjoy it to its fullest. I want to give you a little tour of my coffee table drawer and that is where I keep my polishes 
because this is where I do my nails. I find it easier if everything's a bit lower rather than like desk level. Um, so this is how I normally do my nails. Um, so we're gonna switch angles. All right, so here's my, uh, here's kind of my, my battle station. This is where I'm gonna do my nails. I have some toe color options over here that I'm thinking about doing. Got all my tools, got my nail polish remover, got the new nail polish, cotton ball, stuff like that. And then over to the side of the coffee table, this coffee table is kind of worn out, but it's pretty uh, useful for its storage. So this drawer sort of pops out and let me take it over here. We have my drawer of nails and other miscellaneous stuff. So it's mostly nails, but I also have like some furniture cleaner that I haven't really used, some duct tape, some vacuum cleaner filters, furniture warranty stuff. I have no idea. I do have a UV light in here that I think is from Sally Hansen. And then I have like a nail polish remover. And then these little bags, I keep like my nail tools in, and, like nail decor. This is a bunch of sponges and cotton pads. And this is where I keep all my polish. So I have this like caboodle makeup container kind of thing. And uh, I kind of need, what I really need is like an acrylic drawer. But what I really need is a plastic drawer so I can just look at everything and uh, this stuff kind of moves around when I open and close the drawer. So anyways, I was looking through all this trying to find the, the purple slushy and I had, it was right here, had a hard time. So this is my mostly new stuff. Um, bought a whole bunch of things. I did a recent uh, nail polish crash. Um, I threw away a whole bunch of old nail polishes and uh, just got rid of a whole bunch of things and it was really great because then but that led me to both pretty much buy all this <laughs> new but now instead of like drugstore it's all pretty much indie companies or smaller companies i'll say different companies um but i do have some of my old stuff still Ooh, forgot about this one uh, so I have a lot of I Love Nail Polish, ILNP. I have a lot of things in from this brand because they had a lot to offer. They have these like shifting flakes, plus like a whole bunch of multi-chromes from this company. Um, so a lot of fun in this drawer. I do have the Peely Base, which... I found wasn't really for me. I don't think I really want to save that stuff. I guess I thought it was like the thing where you remove excess nail polish on your hands and that's not what it was. Um, this is another INLP. Bunch of stuff in here, some Essie stuff going on as well. Some Pacifica. Really pretty. But here's even more. So I have a bunch of BKL nail polish. There we go. Which is Bee's Knees Lacquer. I also have a bunch of KB Shimmer. Which is another great company. Um, and then I have some Hollow Taco toppers. The only real shade I have is purple slushy, and then I have like a base and top coat. And I have, almost forgot, the white shade, wherever it is, right here. I have this from Hollow Taco too. Um, but yeah, I have some different textures from KB Shimmer, some glitters. Kind of a shifty, hollowy, kind of 
kind of thing going on there. And yeah, this is uh, my whole collection. It's pretty fun. I've been changing up my nail polishes almost every week since I've bought all these polishes. I just want to use everything as much as possible. Um, I'm the kind of person that rarely did my fingernails, only really did my toenails, so kind of a big deal. I do think part of the reason why I've been doing my nails more often though is because of the pandemic. I'm at home a lot more. I used to do like a lot more stuff at, away from home after work and now usually I'm here during the week. <laughs> so more time to paint my nails. So I'm gonna just chat with you a little bit while I remove my polish and I just use Top Care Nail Polish Remover 100% Acetone. Pretty sure this is old. Yeah. Manufactured in 2017. It's not dangerous at all. Um, yeah. I've definitely gotten my coffee table spilled on with acetone and have taken parts of the finish off. So I don't recommend doing your nails on top of nice furniture. Um, if you are going to do your nails, do it like something you don't care about. Put some newspaper down or paper towels. I just, the, I don't worry so much about spilling over nail polish. I think for me what's more likely to happen is me spilling a bottle of remover. It's because it's larger, bigger spill more liquidy. But yeah, what I'm also doing during this pandemic that I never really got into before besides, you know, my nails is I've been ordering delivery. So, I know that sounds silly. <laughs> Some of you are like, wait, what? Like, I've ordered a pizza, you know, here or there. But I'm ordering I now, like I started ordering groceries and like delivery from restaurants that is not pizza <laughs> um, and it's pretty awesome um, super awesome especially like if you're a new customer you get free delivery for certain companies for like the first month or for 30 days or whatever um, so that's been nice um, I, th I wouldn't normally do it because I live very close to things, not necessarily like comfortable walking distance, but definitely drivable distance. And, um, you know, I live in a fairly city-like setting. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's like a city city, but there's, you know, we're fairly packed in where I live. And so there's a lot of food options. Um, but... I, you know, I don't like eat out every meal or even that many times a week if I'm just like hanging out at home and working. Um, I definitely like to explore on the weekends and like do different things and eat out and enjoy myself. But um, during the week, you know, I usually just make something, um, whatever I can scrap together in my kitchen. Um, quickly usually it's not, not anything too exciting because it's just me here and um, but like last week I was working all day and night pretty much to finish my work and it was a lot of writing so it took a lot of brain power and you know when you don't write every day for your job but only like certain times of the year it can be a struggle to like really get into it and get into a groove and start writing as fast as you need to. So I was like struggling with some of the stuff I had to write and so it was taking me a long time and it was taking me, you know, I need a night and day to finish things all week. And so there was a point where like I didn't have a lot of food, I was like out of microwave meals and I was like, you know, I could just go and go pick up some Mexican food real quick and then come back. But then I'm like, that's probably going to waste 
at least 30 to 40 minutes for me to go do that because you know I have to order it I have to drive there order it wait for the food drive back because um, what I wanted wasn't close by um, so when I was like you know I'm gonna so I first got a door like a DoorDash gift card and I got like three meals out of that um, ordering like Thai food so I already did that earlier in that week and so I think it was Thursday or Friday I'm like you know I'm out of food again <laughs> I don't want to make anything I don't have time to make anything so maybe I should just order DoorDash again this time you know without the gift card but it was still free delivery I'll remove now and <laughs> now I need to remove my toenail polish and so I ended up deciding, you know, it's going to be quicker if I can just continue working. I order Mexican off food from, on the phone. I'm going to order it from a closer place. And it should get here, you know, pretty quick. And the second time I did it, the food definitely came fast. And they delivered it to my door. Um, they got a little confused of where I lived but they called me, we cleared it up. They just left it at the door and left, which is great. And um, everything was perfect, the order was perfect. It's just the food, you know, wasn't, it wasn't my first choice of place. The food wasn't that great, like the tacos weren't that good. The burrito was great. Um, but I got like a couple meals out of it, actually three again, because I cut the burrito in half. Um, but, you know, it was very convenient. I have to say, like, being able to continue to do work and just have food arrive to your door is so amazing. That isn't pizza. You know, it's whatever you want. I've definitely seen my neighbors do it all the time, and I'm just kind of like, I live so close, is it really worth it? But I think, to me, if I'm working, this is how I justify it, if I'm working, and I don't really have time to take a break, but I really want to eat something. Um, maybe delivery is actually the way to go. Um, I've seen my neighbor order bagels, orange juice, coffee, Mel's Diner, <laughs> like everything. Um, it's definitely convenient. I will say like you can minimize delivery fees by subscribing i haven't done that yet i don't know if i'm committing to this or not i don't really want to because i'm not getting a whole lot of exercise right now i know this isn't all good for me um but you know the it's very convenient if you get a place close to you it's gonna be pretty fast and you know you give like they have a recommended tip depending on like the app you use or you can tip whatever you want like for the convenience paying that extra tip money is totally worth it but you know if you had to feed a whole bunch of people I think it works for like one or two people but if you had to feed a whole bunch of people that way I think that's when the orders can kind of get a little crazy, mixed up. They gotta carry two bags. Yeah. So, I don't know. Are you guys doing delivery more? Did you do it before? Um, it's definitely new to me. I still find it a little bit awkward and a little bit odd. And I always find new places that I haven't really seen on Yelp on these delivery apps. I'm like, is this place actually good? Because I feel like everybody rates everything really high. And I'm like, I've never even heard of this place. And I eat out quite a bit. So when I see stuff on these apps that's like most popular, I'm like, sometimes it surprises me. So but what I am really liking is delivery because I live up several flights of stairs with no elevator and getting groceries is like a chore 
especially because I don't like to make a bunch of trips. Like, I don't go weekly. I go, like, monthly. And so I get a lot of stuff. Sometimes, like, $200 worth. Some t usually less. Sometimes more. Just depends what I buy. Um, but I like to bulk up. Like, I'll get two milks. Um, so that way I'm good to go. I get milk that lasts a long time. And I think that's been a game changer. I have noticed. There's different fees for different companies, how fast they're going to get to you. I did try Instacart, and that was really cool because they were interacting with you while they were shopping for you and saying, hey, they don't have this. Do you want this, or do you want a replacement or not? And so it was very customized, but that app charges a lot, and you definitely are recommended to tip based on how much you spend. Whereas other companies, they don't accept tips, which I'm probably I'm getting my food tomorrow. I'm still gonna probably offer money to that person, um, because I feel bad that they are walking all that way with all those bags. <sighs> but you can save money going through companies that don't have all the fees, don't require tipping, or they don't even allow tipping. Um, but that is with like a particular chain or grocery store. It's not like applicable to all stores. Um, also, oh, also with Instacart, you can get things in two hours, which is awesome. But you're paying a pretty penny for that convenience. Whereas if you go directly with the grocery store and get delivery, depending on, you know, the chain you go to. Plan ahead a little bit, like you get it the next day between certain hours. So like between 10 and 12, one and three, or two and four. And, or if you want to pay the cheapest amount of delivery, you have like a three or four hour window and you just have to be home for those three and four hours. But some of us are home anyway, not a big deal. So those are actually way less cost. But if you want within like an hour or two hour window, you're gonna be paying that premium. But I think that's really cool for those people that, say you're planning like a party where you're cooking and maybe you don't have anybody to go get and run something for you, go get something for you that you really need and you still have to make other stuff. You just have somebody deliver it. Like, how awesome is that? So my feet look really terrible right now. Oh, and I forgot to show you my blue nail polish. <sighs> oh well, I'm not sure I'm, I'm uh, comfortable showing my toes right now. I'm just filing a little bit. I have the glass nail filo from Hollow Taco. I like it. One thing I would suggest to be careful about with your toenails is how you file or cut them. You want to avoid ingrown toenails because those are, those can get so bad that you need surgery to remove them. And then you can cause like real permanent damage to your nail bed. So you don't want to do that. My nails are kind of a mess right now. Alright, we're going to use the long-lasting base from Hollow Taco on my toes and nails, fingernails. I don't know that I necessarily would buy this base again, just because I don't know that it's anything special. Um, haven't noticed that my nail polish sticks any better or anything like that, but I will use all of it. Some issues with polish sticking and I think probably my application rather than the base coat, but it seem to be helping, I guess. Okay, I'm just uh, applying this to all my nails. You know, if I were to create a nail polish company, I think about like what kind of bottle my design, bottle design would be like. And for me, since I had such a hard time today finding one nail polish, because all of the nail polishes I have, the top is black, I would try to find a nail polish that didn't have a, a black top. But 
but I'm sure that makes everything cost more. Because they can't use the, the top that they use on everything else. But still, it just, maybe as a brand, I just wouldn't use black at all. And then my brand would stand out in your collection, especially if you organize like I do, where you're not like on a shelf, but you can only see the tops. That's what I do because it's not like you have the option of like laying it down like this or like this. Like for certain you're going to have leaks <laughs> at some point when you don't close the cap all the way. So I'm thinking about for my toes, I still want to do something summery and I'm thinking doing like this, these two pinks together where you have this like matte classic summery bright pink. This is Guava Nice Day in KB Shimmer, or you have the Bees Knees Lacquer as Lane, which is like a goldy pink, pink with a gold shift. And then I could do some hollow taco flaky topper stuff, or I could do some BKL like blue duochrome things bluey or purpley. kind of like the purpley one. I don't know. I feel like these are both, like the blue purples are both pretty summery, especially with the sparkle. But the pink is like especially summery because of how bright it is. So I want to kind of take advantage of summer while I still can. So I think I'm going to go with the pink on my toes and do the vamp on my nails just because I think I probably could have get away with these in the fall. So we're going to go with the pink. Alright, my base coat is good and dry. We're going to get into vamp. Here we go. Now what I didn't know, like looking up up close to this bottle. It has little slight micro shimmers in it and I know this light is not going to be able to show you but um, it's real subtle. So we're going to try this one out. A little scared because dark polishes did not hide imperfections well. Real thin brush. It feels like a nice thin buildable formula. Definitely gonna need a couple coats. The underbelly, look at that messy nail. I'm gonna have to use my brush to remove the excess because this isn't gonna do it. <laughs> but you can see, get the idea of the color. Pretty, right? It's not a bad formula. It's like real thin. It's a uh, because it's so thin. I think it's a little bit. You definitely will need more than one coat. The problem I always have with removing my nail polish with a cotton swab is that the cotton gets stuck in my nail. Insect nail. I'm curious. Do you guys match up your base cut and top coats? with the same brand of polish or do you have you use one base and top coat and, and across multiple brands like do you change it up do you put Chanel base coat Chanel polish how do you guys do it do you find anything that works universally because that's what I would prefer I don't want to have to buy a base and top coat for every brand that's crazy that's pretty, yeah? Pretty, pretty. This obviously needs another coat because you can see through it, but um, I think it's nice. Just gonna make sure I do the underlay. That way I don't get chips. Alright, there's the whole hand. First coat. guys can see what that looks like. Kind of 
kind of witchy. Witchy woman. I'd say it's kind of a, a wine, almost brick red with this first coat. All right, this is both hands after the first coat. I'm gonna do clean up after the second coat. I think that'll be a little bit more efficient than doing it twice. Um, but you can see longer nails, shorter nails. I think it looks a little less intimidating with shorter nails. This starts getting into a little bit of like a witchy territory, which is perfect for Halloween, but um, I don't know. What do you guys think? The formula is nice. It's definitely better than drugstore, which you would expect from Chanel. It's definitely like a thinner, smoother formula, um, which is great for building up. Like it's not super thick or chalky like. Um, it's definitely a pretty color for sure. Um, yeah, it makes me want to buy other colors. I don't know what other color I really want, but um, I think there was like a pink, like a nudie pink one that was sold out when I ordered from Violet Gray, but um, this is really pretty. Um, I'm gonna do a second coat on my toes and fingers and we'll, I'll come back. All right, here is the second coat of my toes using the KB Shimmer Guava Nice Day. So two coats there. There's my other foot. Very nice. And then for my hands. So I am very impressed with this polish. It is super easy to apply, almost goof proof. Um, I definitely had to clean up my nails though because I'm a messy applier. But even though I'm not great at applying polish, this is one of the easiest formulas I have tried so far. Um, I don't remember it being this good when I bought Chanel many years ago, but I think this formula is, I don't know what's, what's so good about it, but it's particularly easy. It's been drying pretty fast. This is the second coat. And yeah, I have to say, um, I really like this. This makes me want to buy some more Chanel. Really, really nice. Um, this is two coats, I'd say plus, maybe two and a half. I just did like enough coverage to make sure all the streaks are gone. And uh, yeah, I think what makes this so good is that it's thin and it's a smooth formula. The only thing for me is the brush is really thin so it makes it a little harder to apply but um, just almost like so shiny like I know my camera isn't like totally doing this justice but it's almost like a car finish and this color is just really good so very impressed. I do need to wait to put on a top coat and then the this sort of shiny gold on top of my toes and then I will be back. Alright guys, I put on the gold pink and then I also put the hollow taco flaky in solar unicorn skin on top of that. So that is what my toes look like. Still very pink and summery, and then my hands look very fall. So I absolutely love this color. I love the finish. It's super shiny. I put the super glossy taco, or actually I only have the, the regular glossy taco top coat. Um, so that, uh, these are the final nails, and uh, yeah. I really like the color. I love the formula. I wouldn't say this is like completely hard dry, um, but yeah, I'm very impressed with these nails. Huge fan of the Chanel Vamp. So let me know if you have any questions. 
If you've tried any other Chanel polishes that you really love, any colors that you guys are a fan of, please let me know. Yeah, I like, I'm pretty open to colors, so suggest what you want. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> please let me know if you have any questions, comment below, click like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.